And uh, in it, you say, and I want to get this right, I want to read this. Lobbies in Washington are systematically <laughs> appropriating forest land through <laughs> imminent domain. Is that correct? <laughs> That's right, Dick. These greedy corporations are destroying our parks, our wildlife, our forests. And in the process, a fresh and minty girl like yourself would no longer be able to hike, rock climb, and eventually shower your taut, naked body under the soothing flow of a natural waterfall. I guess. But we must get the message out there that we're destroying the planet. OK, but Nancy, how can you take away the joy of cutting down a tree? <laughs> What? Well, I remember at holiday time, one of my fathers <laughs> would always take me to one of those places where you cut down your own Christmas tree. <laughs> I just love the smell after I cut one. Dick, I'm talking about the lumber companies who are destroying the forests. When they do that, the animals that live there have no place to go. Well, can't they just move to another forest? No, Dick, it's their only home. Have you ever lived among the animals of the forest? I have a little experience with sheep. <laughs> but that's it. 4-H. It is so beautiful there. Right now, I'm living and working in Oregon to save Whitaker National Forest. Folks, I wanted to see what Nancy's forest looked like. <laughs> so I packed up my 86 Cordoba. It has three-wheel drive. And I went deep into the bush to see what it looks like. <laughs> what was that one about? <laughs> Folks, watch as we present another documentary. <laughs> This one called Green Like Me. Let's watch. Well, folks, here it is, my home camp. I got to tell you something. There's nothing better than waking up to the morning wood. And roughing it wasn't as bad as I thought. But now it was time to get closer to nature. Oh, it felt so great to be in the outdoors. I never felt so free. Suddenly, I heard something. Danger! Danger! I didn't know what to expect. My heart was pounding. All my primitive instincts came out. There I was, miles from civilization. I feared I was about to die. But then I realized it was just a little bear cub. A little bear cub who has lost its way. Hey, little bear cub. Where's your mom, little buddy? Well, that little bear cub taught me so much about nature, about life, and that it's okay to go to the bathroom in the woods. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very proud of that film. You know, I think that film proved. That film didn't prove a thing. Don't you know the difference between a bear and a cocker spaniel? <laughs> No, but I love these. What's the difference between a bear and a cocker spaniel? Dick, my mother was killed by a bear. That's the punchline? No, she was really killed by a bear. I'm so sorry. Mueller, chair, please. Oh, I had no idea. This is, I'm sure, a tragic story. So just please tell us. Well, it happened on a camping trip. Mm -hmm. And my father was at the stream fishing. I see. When a bear attacked my mother and devoured her. Uh, let me ask you this. When your father came back from fishing, had he caught anything? <laughs> what? What difference does that make? I don't know. I thought it might change the subject. Listen, I'm sorry. You just go ahead and cry, and you just go ahead and slobber on yourself. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Folks, what makes this story all the more dramatic is that Nancy's last name is Cornhoser. 
Now, as you know, Kornhoser is one of the biggest names in the logging industry. You see, Nancy's father is Charles Kornhoser, the logging giant. And we're gonna meet him when we come back. Did anybody tell you? Yeah, he's gonna be here. Hi, Q. Thank you very much. Okay, we're back. We're talking about whether or not we should save the planet. And remember, I have no opinion. <laughs> With us is the natural and piney, fresh little girl, Nancy Kornhoser. <laughs> now, Nancy, I understand you brought something with you from the forest tonight. What have you got? Well, they're all backstage. I brought a raccoon, a spotted owl, a full-grown mountain lion, and wild turkey. Terrific. We can drink the wild turkey while we're looking at all the animals. <laughs> so, uh, what's, uh, what's first? Well, I thought we would start with the raccoon and then save the mountain lion for last. Terrific. This is going to be great, folks. In fact, go wake up the kids. I don't care if it's 4 in the morning. They're going to love this. What do we got back there, Nancy? Okay, this is Mr. Raccoon. Uh-huh. No, mountain lion, you stay there. No, no, calm down, calm down. No, no, please. Turkey, no. no. They're dead? They're all dead. Oh, jeez, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Come on up here and take your seat. That is so bad. Sit right down there. But, Nancy, you got to know something right now. Those animals did not die in vain. Let me tell you something. Nothing goes better with our crew than fresh, juicy mountain lion steaks. It's all my fault. No, Nancy. Okay, we can't bring back those cute dead animals. But we can bring back your father. Folks, he's the chairman and CEO of Cornhoser Industries, the largest paper, scissors, and rock conglomerate in the world. Come on out, Charles Cornhoser. <laughs> Mr. Cornhoser, welcome. Not the friendliest welcome to you, though, sir. Ah, that's all right, Dick. I'm used to that kind of response. Why don't you call me Chuck? Okay, Chuck. Now, lumber companies have always been painted as the bad guys. Anyone who rapes the natural habitat is a bad guy. Oh, Chuck, strong words, especially coming from your own daughter. No, I, as a matter of fact, Dick, I feel very sorry for my daughter. As you know, her mother died when she was just a child, and I had to put Nancy into a boarding school, and she's always resented that. So now she takes out her anger toward me on my business. Oh, come on, Father. The simple fact is that, that your greedy industry has destroyed millions of acres of forest land. Oh, please. My greedy industry has employed thousands of hardworking Americans. Yes, in fact, one of them is here tonight. Yes, sir, stand up. You have a comment. Dick, my name's Earl Jackson, mm -hmm. and I'm a lumberjack. Yeah. And I'm here to say if this woman wins this battle, I'm out of work. How can I support my wife? Uh-huh, and I assume your wife is watching at home. No, she's right here. Stand up, honey. Uh, here I am, Dick. <laughs> if, if, if my husband don't have a job, we can't have meat on the table. He puts meat on the table? Um, yeah. well, I think I just became a vegetarian. <laughs> we can't feed the poor little children we had together. They'll go hungry. Exactly, Dick. And if your children don't eat, they won't have the strength to sit on the porch and play the banjo. That's it. <laughs> That's correct. OK, well, thanks for being here, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Dick, the lumber companies are only interested in chopping down trees for a profit. Oh, listen, we plant more trees per year than any other company in the world. Yeah, only so you can chop them down again. That's recycling, honey. Oh, oh boy, here it goes. The, goes. the age-old battle between a father and the daughter he carried and gave birth to. Look at him. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you, folks. We're back, and with us is Radical Concert... What is that word there, ma'am? Can you read that? Uh, conservationist. Conservationist. I, I thought it was with a K. <laughs> Nancy Kornhoser and her lumber tycoon father, Chuck Kornhoser. Now, ooh, there's that, there's that reaction again. Now, Nancy, there must be some sort of compromise that you can work out with your very wealthy father. He's no better than a common strip miner. Oh. Now, folks, for those of you who don't know, a strip miner is a male exotic dancer who wears nothing but a G-string and a pickaxe. 
You see, Dick, she makes it sound like we're the only ones responsible for destroying the forest. What about all the trees that are destroyed by the animals? Oh, yeah, like a woodchuck can compete with a chainsaw? You know, that does beg the question, how much wood can a woodchuck chuck? <laughs> if a woodchuck could chuck wood, chuck? <laughs> Well, someone who might be able to answer that question is the foreman for Cornhoser Industries. Give him a hand. Come on out, Stone Mason. Stone, welcome to the show. It's nice to be here, Dick. Now, you work for Mr. Cornhoser in the Forest Division. That's right. I'm a branch representative. <laughs> well, I don't think I'd be going on a limb here if I said you're a good-looking Joe. Yeah. You ever done any strip mining? <laughs> Strip mining, why? Well, I mention that because looking at you, I realized the village people should have had a woodsman. <laughs> anyway, you work for Mr. Cornhoser, but you know his daughter, too. Yes, I do. Oh, you bet he does. Every time she stages one of her demonstrations or changes herself to a tree, Stone here is the one who has to call the cops and handle the media. Ah, so he's a valuable employee. Oh, he's more than that, Dick. He's like a son to me. So he's like the son your daughter should have been. <laughs> One day, Dick, Stone Mason's gonna be the president of Cornhoser Industries. Ah. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm flattered, sir, but I I'm afraid I have a, a conflict of interest. What do you mean? We love each other, Father. We're going to be married. Oh. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute, Stone. A little, a little, uh, Oh, you mean to say you're willing to give up your entire career in my company for the love of this fanatic? Sir, she's taught me the importance of ecology and wildlife preservation. I would sacrifice all of your forests for one little beaver. <laughs> oh, no, people! Oh, we're pathetic. We're talking about the furry little creature. I can't believe this. I lost my wife, my little girl, and now the son my daughter should have been. <laughs> I'm a failure. Come on, Chuck, you're not a failure. You may not have happiness, but you got millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> Dick, money can't buy the things that I really care about. My life is destroyed. Well, now you know how the little beavers feel. <laughs> is that true, Chuck? Do you know how they feel? No. No, I hate animals. I hate them. And everything they stand for. They killed your mother. Well, if I can forgive the bear, why can't you? Oh, even if I could forgive the bear, I could never forgive... myself. Daddy, what are you talking about? I know what he's talking about. He ate your mother. <laughs> no, but I was responsible for her death. You know what, folks? I sense a confession about to happen. We, this happens on our show a lot. It's very difficult for you. I want you to take your time and you just let your feelings out. This is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Excuse me one second. Let me just interrupt you one second. Dennis, I'm thinking it's going to play great on camera four, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> This is the hardest thing I've ever I'm had. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Dennis, you were right. Camera three, you were right. <laughs> Honey, I loved your mother more than anyone else in the world. We had so much in common. We were passionate about each other. We loved the outdoors. In fact, when we were outdoors, we were even more passionate. For you regular nightstand viewers, the word passionate means horny. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, your mother and I went on a camping trip. And, well, the minute we got to the campsite, your mother and I became very um, horny. <laughs> so, um, she slipped into a teddy and I pitched a tent. Like any man would do. And then your mother and I, well, this is the difficult part. Uh, your mom and I engaged in uh, 
wild sex. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wild sex! Please continue. <laughs> well, then I did something that your mother always loved. I tied her spread eagle to a tree. Oh, my God. And, and just as after I finished covering her with the honey, I remembered I left the bullwhip back at the car. <laughs> so I had, went back to get it. And while I was away, the bear, the bear, the bear came over the mountain. <laughs> The bear came over the mountain? The bear came over the mountain. Uh, to see what he could see? <laughs> to see what he could see. So the bear came over the mountain to see what he could see. <laughs> Please continue. By the time I got back to the campsite, that bear had already licked all the honey off your mother. But, but no, he wasn't content to let it go at that. Honey, you know, your mother had never been with anybody besides me until that bear. <laughs> so the bear had your wife and ate her too. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's horrible. I never knew. Sir, that is one grisly story. <laughs> Look, Mr. Cornhoser, don't you see? Uh, killing all those little animals to get back at that bear, it's never gonna bring your wife back. You're right. You're right, Stone. You're right. I just, I never realized that until now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to make an announcement. Excuse me, Chuck, all announcements, camera two. <laughs> I am immediately announcing the suspension of all logging in Whitaker Forest. Yay! And as for you two, you have my blessing. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Ah. Look at it this way, Chuck. You're not losing a daughter. You're gaining a son you always wanted your daughter to be. <laughs> a happy ending. We'll be right back with my wrap-up right after this. Hey, thank you very much. So, folks, what have we learned tonight? Well, we learned that the forest is a wondrous place full of animals and wild sex. <laughs> we also learned that a bear is a ferocious creature capable of devouring a human being in an instant. But should we be afraid of these animals? No. For instance, remember that cute little bear cub you saw in my documentary? Well, folks, that was filmed a few months ago, and now that bear cub is a full-grown bear that I have befriended. In fact, he lives with me now in my spacious condo. I want to bring him out. Here he is. I got him. Don't worry. Here we go. Say a little Smokey, everybody. Hi, <laughs> For now, I'm... Oh, man. I'm Dick Dietrich. Oh, man. That was a whole lot of fun, but it isn't over yet. We've got a whole new show coming right up. <laughs>